my dreamers welcome back I thought we would do something a little bit different with this month's subscription boxes I have my uh, May Ipsy and my May Birch box here and I thought instead of just showing you the products and giving you reviews we do a little get ready with me so um, first off a couple of housekeeping things um, the Ipsy theme for this month is Your Summer Story Starts Here. And it says there are 93 days, 15 hours, and 47 minutes of summer. Um, as usual, they want you to do the um, reviews on Ipsy and go review your products. The bag for Ipsy this month looks like this. It's see-through with ice cream cones and popsicles. Not crazy about this bag at all, um, but we will be going through all of those products. The BoxyCharm theme is Makeup is Art, and there is product information on the back, so I will tell you that kind of as we go on. So I will tell you you know which product came from which bag as we do this if you like this style of video better than just the reviews then leave me a comment down below and let me know so first thing um, if there wasn't a product in the bags then I'm just going to use something that I already had so I'm going to use this Urban Decay brightening and tightening complexion what's it called complexion primer potion um, I'm going to use that for my primer, if I can get some out. I'm getting kind of close to the end of that. The first product that we're going to get to um, from the bags is from BoxyCharm. And it is a foundation brush. And I was super, super excited when I saw it in the bag. And it is this um, crown brush. It's one of those um, ones that's supposed to be like the Artiste brushes. It's very densely packed and it looks like a gigantic toothbrush. Um, this is called the Round Contour Brush and it retails for $24.99. So just with the first product, we've exceeded the cost of BoxyCharm because it cost $21. I'm going to use my Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation, and this is in Y235. So, like that, and I will tell you right off the bat that I love this brush. I have not tried the Artiste brush, and I have not tried any of the other sort of um, dupes that are in existence. So I can't tell you what the comparison is like, but I can show you what the application is like. So generally what I do is I just kind of dot my foundation all over my face. And then just smooth it in. And I love the application. It is so easy. And it gives such a nice finish. Um, I've only tried this with a couple of different foundations so far, and I have, it's hard to talk when I'm around my mouth, and I've liked it with all of them so far. Um, I will say if you are a nose ring wearer like I am, this is the easiest thing that I've ever used to apply foundation around that flawlessly. So yeah, loving, loving, loving this. The handle is very sturdy. I've watched a lot of reviews for um, dupe brushes for the Artiste and one of the major complaints is that the handle is not very sturdy. The handle on this one is very sturdy. So if you're looking for a less expensive um, dupe, again, I don't know if it's a dupe because I have not tried the Artiste brush because it is ridiculously expensive but that is a very good brush and I have been enjoying it a lot. 
Um, okay, let's do some concealer. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer in Light Ivory. And I just got this. And I know that people say it is a dupe for the Tarte Shape Tape, which I have not tried because it is ridiculously expensive. But I can say that I do like this concealer a lot. So I'm just, my beauty blender is not very damp anymore. I dampened it this morning, but it still works. And this is actually, it's not a beauty blender, it's one of the pure um, blenders that came in BoxyCharm last month, which I don't think I did videos of, but I'm absolutely loving those. Okay, uh, moving on, um, in BoxyCharm this month was this Highlight and Contour Palette by Ivy Beauty. I've gotten a couple of things from Ivy Beauty from BoxyCharm before, and I have quite liked them. So these are the colors that are in there. And I'll show you the contour colors first. So these are the contour colors, and I think that um, this one on the end this one right here is quite a bit more gray toned if you're looking for like a true kind of chiseled contour. And then I think, um, you know, both of these are actually really great for, I would say, light to medium skin tones. I think that if you're any darker than a medium skin tone, these are going to be way too light for you. And I think that if you are um, an extremely fair person that they're all going to be too dark. I don't know if there are any other shades because it doesn't have like a shade listed on here anywhere. The highlights I am a whole lot less impressed with because they're really not, I don't really consider them to be highlights. They're, if you're going to be doing like a contour type face where you're doing a full contour, and you're doing you know the the dark and the light then I think that that's what those powders are going to be good for but they are not definitely sort of a highlight for your face so I've been using this middle one which is a little bit more yellow to set my under eye and I have a runaway eyelash And let's see, what was that brush? This was a Real Techniques setting brush, and that's what I usually use to set my under eye. Okay, I'm gonna go in with my Sephora Pro Contour Blush Contour Number 74 brush. This is what I use to do kind of my contour, and I'm actually, I've been using this middle powder, and I've really kind of been liking that one the most. So I'm not really doing like a super chiseled contour or anything. I'm just kind of warming up my face because it's been winter and I am at my playlist right now and that really didn't cover up very well, did it? Let's take a little bit of that. Concealer, that Wet n Wild concealer, and then let's see if we can. So, oh, pretty good for spot concealing too. I haven't really tried it for that yet because I don't have breakouts very often. Um, okay, there was not a blush in anything, so I'm gonna go in with my. Uh, no, I don't want to use that one because it's. Shimmery. I'm going to use the Tarte Parte Amazonian Clay Blush. This was um, part of the Sephora birthday gift for this year. And I do quite like this blush. I'm going a little overboard there. 
Okay, there were two highlights that came in bags this month. There was the Temp2 Liquid Glow, and that came in BoxyCharm. I actually had two samples of this, and I decluttered it. I don't think it was this color, though, um, and it doesn't say what color it is. And then there was this Urban Decay Afterglow uh, 8 Hour Powder Highlight, and I guess I don't see a color on that either. So, what we are going to do, because you can never have too much highlight. Oh, this is in the color Sin, it says on the inside. So, what we are going to do, because you can never have too much highlight, right? Is we're going to do the liquid and then we're going to top it with, ooh, got way too much. And then we're going to top it with the powder. So, I'm just going to kind of dot this on. I'm really not generally a fan of liquid highlighters, which is why I decluttered the two little Tem2 samples that I had before. And this is just my e.l.f. small stipple brush. Because I think they, they tend to make me feel a little greasy by the end of the day. And I'm actually, I'm not really blown away by this temp to one at all so you can see that you know it's just a little bitty kind of subtle glow that that almost I don't know I think that it accentuates texture that I have on my skin and I don't think that it it really blends very well in with the rest of the products that I use on my face and I don't think that it really gives much of a punch so I'm really unimpressed by that. If you're looking for a liquid highlight, um, the Marc Jacobs um, Do You the Coconut Glow, this is a really, really good one. I got this from Influencer for free because you guys know I can't afford to buy products like this, but this one is really fantastic, so I would definitely um, go for that one over the Temp2 one. The Temp2 one is $29.50, so not really much product difference. All right, so let's go in with this Urban Decay one. And what is this? This is a So Susan fan brush, which I got in BoxyCharm, I believe. So yeah, that is a big difference. This highlight, I like. Um, I like it better by itself rather than sort of layered with the Temp2. But I like this one because you can do kind of a nice subtle glow with a light dusting or you can go in a little bit heavier handed and get kind of a disco ball glow. So it really, I think, covers all the bases. So I am excited to have that. Um, and that will be going in my Z palette very, very soon. Okay, so that is the rest of that. Let's put on some eye primer, and I'm going to use my Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. And I always like to put my primer on before I do my brows because that just kind of gives it a little bit of time to set. And then I will set it with powder anyway. <laughs> All right, so in BoxyCharm, there were two brow products this month. Um, both by the brow gal, Tanya Crooks. So there was this which is called the Convertible Brow, and it says it is a power pomade um, duo that acts as a powder when used dry and as a pomade when used wet. That looks like a trio to me. <laughs> um, it says it's $35, um, and it says each compact has a warm, neutral, and ash tone 
to allow you to mix your perfect custom color. So I guess by duo, they're talking about the Power Pomade. I'm not a big pomade fan, um, so I really didn't, I only tried this wet one time. Cat, leave the camera alone. Um, I only tried this as a pomade one time and I just, I didn't like it, but that is my preference. I prefer a powder. And then there was also a brow brush that came with it and with a nice angled tip and a spoolie. I will say that um, as far as these powders go, and this is really kind of a funky thing. So um, this brush seems very, very slick and I've used it quite a few times. It's got, you know, I haven't washed it yet. It's got quite a bit of product on it, but it just feels a lot more slippery. Um, the brow brush that I usually use, which is by Bodyography, which I got in a subscription box a million years ago, um, is a much um, more densely packed. Um, it is obviously a different kind of fiber and it is much more stiff. This brush has a whole lot of give. I think that it's probably, um, does it say? It doesn't say, but I think that this is probably um, a synthetic brush because um, it is very slippery. So the only color that works for me is that darkest one. So that is what I am going to go into. And I just find that with a stiffer, um, brush I have a lot more control and I have tried this with my see I'm just kind of getting all over the place here um, I have tried this with my regular brush and with this brush and I have to use a lot less product when I use my bodyography brush and um, I can get a much more precise line and they're the same shape pretty much essentially so I think it's just because this is just this just has a lot more give to it um, and it's a lot more slippery of a brush so I did much better on that side so I don't know so I like I like these powders um, the only thing that I don't like about compacts like this is that these other two colors I will never get any kind of use out of because my hair is just entirely too dark. Um, I This is almost even really not quite working because it's a little bit too ashy. Um, I need something a little bit cooler, something a little less warm because my hair is purple. So other, you know, I really like the powders. I like the fact that you can do that wet as a pomade. If you're a pomade person, that is a, a good one. I just don't particularly care for pomades. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go in with my Cella Eyebrow Defining Gel and just kind of set those, and I'm not sure why I'm doing this step because this makeup is really not going to stay on because I'm going to go to bed after this, after I listen to like a bazillion more podcast episodes. So I have been, um, if, if you guys watch my channel at all, you know that I am like a true crime podcast junkie and I finished up Undisclosed Season 2, and then I listened to In the Dark, which, um, you know, that is, I don't know if you would necessarily want to listen to that one, um, because it is, um, and, oh my gosh, his name just completely um, left my brain. Ugh. But it was about the 11-year-old um, boy in Michigan that was kidnapped and killed now I have moved on to The Accused, which is another fantastic, so if you're into true crime podcasts um, and you have a favorite one, leave me a comment down below and let me know what your favorite one is because I'm getting close to the end of The Accused and I do have some other ones on my list, but I'm always looking for new ones. All right, let's get to eyes, shall we? Okay, so the Ipsy, we haven't done a whole lot of Ipsy yet. The Ipsy came with this. This is super cute from Jelly Pong Pong Cosmetics. And it is a supercharged, super intense eye duo. Um, and I guess it is, the color is electric. So these are the colors. 
So they're really quite pretty. Let me swatch them for you. So they are both super duper metallic y. So we're going to kind of do like a mostly, mostly two color eyeshadow look today and kind of see how that goes. Um, I have worn these both several different ways, but I haven't really tried that yet. So we'll give it a go. Um, but before I do that, I am going to set my eye primer um, with Velveteen Bunny from my Too Faced uh, Matte Eye. So this is a step that I don't like to skip because I think it just really helps the overall eye look. All right, so let's see, how do I wanna do this? Okay, I'm going to take my Coastal Scents BRC NO2, just a flat shader brush, and I think I'm gonna go into that um, that lighter, that gold color, and I think I'm just going to pack that all over my lid. The pigmentation on these is okay. Um, I do have to dip in several times to really kind of get the pigmentation that I want, but I don't really experience any fallout. So, but once I kind of layer them, layer it up, I do get like a really nice gold going on there. Okay, so now I'm going to take um, just kind of like a dense little flat brush and make sure I don't have anything on it from this morning. And I'm going to go into that darker gold color. And I'm going to put that on my lower lash line. And I'm going to do like my outer V thing with it here. So if you've never watched um, any of my video tutorials before where I talk about hooded eyes, this is sort of my, let's see if this helps here, because I keep, I'm looking like way down to see my, <laughs> to see my um, actual mirror, but this is kind of my technique for hooded eyes. I give myself like a little line stamp to follow here. And um, if you don't have hooded eyes, then, you know, go into your crease and do all that fun stuff. Um, okay. bigger flat shady brush and I'm going to put this all over the outer corner and this is looking very very glittery <laughs> at the moment so normally I mix in a lot more mattes with a look but I'm kind of trying to focus on using these shadows. The wear time on these is pretty good. Um, they don't really get muddy on me, but they do start to fade. Fluffy blending brush. They do start to fade. Um, and I would say that, you know, by the end of like a typical... 10, 14 hour day that I usually do. They're there, but they're they're light. You know, they've they've kind of faded out. So actually that's that's turned out not not too bad at all, has it? Alright, and I think for good measure, I'm gonna go back into that sin highlight and take my little dome brush and I'm just going to pop that on the inner corner there. Let's kind of brighten that up. Like that. 
I'm actually quite pleased with it. I was thinking that I was going to need to really bring in another darker color for that outer corner because I was thinking that I would look at it and I would go, oh my gosh, that is too light because you guys know I like my eyeshadows dark and I like my outer corners even darker. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm actually fairly pleased with that look. Okay, there in the Ipsy bag, there was an Endless Silky Eye Pin from Pixie, which of course you can find at Target, and this is in black. So I am going to do my tight line and my water line with this. And I will say that the pigmentation on this is amazing. But it does not stay. Um, it doesn't stay in my waterline. It will stay on my tight line for about six hours. Um, it will stay on my waterline for about two, which is really disappointing because the pigmentation on this is just incredible. So there you go. Um, I usually use pencils like this for those areas and then I go in with a liquid for my upper lash line. This is the Scandal Eyes Precision Micro Eyeliner from Remmel. And I'm going to have to use the big mirror and look down a little bit to do this. And do like my little baby kitten wing. If you have hooded eyes like mine and you are really a big fan of wings but you just struggle with them, I highly recommend just resigning yourself to loving the little kitten wing and your life will be much easier and much happier. I'm used to having something a bit darker on my lower lash line, but I'm kind of digging the lighter color. Um, all right, mascara. Let's give those eyelashes a curl. If I do this again, I really need to set my mirror like on top of something. I don't really have anything right here handy but I really need to set like my mirror on top of something so <laughs> that I can look up a bit more. Um, I'm going to use my Clinique High Impact Mascara. I'm doing this um, with a project pan and I am just about to the end of it so This is a, a pretty decent mascara. I always like getting the samples. I've never actually purchased it. Let's give that a second coat. because it's always good to go glam for bed, right? He says you shouldn't just play with makeup at the end of the day and only wear it for like 15 minutes. Um, okay. So my camera shut off while I was telling you about this liquid lipstick and I tried to uh, take it off and I'm going to need some makeup remover to really fully get it off so we'll just start over and, <laughs> and do our best. So. In the Ipsy bag, there was this caked liquid fondant lipstick, um, I think is what it was called, and I dropped the box on the floor while I was mad, um, lip fondant. And this reminds me of the Ofra liquid lipsticks. It has kind of that same whipped feeling to it. This is the kind of um, 
lip product that I really do prefer. This is in the color Low Key. And I'll go ahead and put another layer on. And I kind of made a mess of things when I was trying to take it off. But this is an absolutely beautiful color. I love it. I do think that it is a little bit more of a fall color than a summer color. And I'm really kind of uneven there um, on my lips. But there you have it. It's late and I'm out of my camera. <laughs> um, but I really enjoy this formula. It feels very, very nice when it goes on. The Doe Fit applicator does have that little scoop in it that is so, so, so popular right now. So it makes application very easy. I really like it when they have those because like you saw when I applied, I can flip it over and I can kind of line my lips and then do a full application and I think that it looks great. Um, it does dry down completely. It is not 100% transfer proof, but it is also not one of those liquid lipsticks that gets really, really dry. I'm not 100% keen on the way that it wears down. Um, if you eat, it is going to sort of wear off, but you saw before I applied it, that was kind of when I, I tried to wipe it off. So once you really let it set, um, it is going to kind of wear down to look a little bit more like a stain. Um, and I have noticed that it doesn't, you know, where you get a lot of lip good lipsticks that kind of wear off right here um, on the middle of your lip, it doesn't really do that. Um, it does leave a little bit of an outside line um, it, because, you know, I, that may be the way that I apply it um, because I do sort of line right on the outside of my lips. Um, but you can see at this point, I'm not getting really any, you know, I'm not getting much transfer at all, um, but it is not 100% transfer proof until it is completely, completely set. Um, it doesn't go down completely dry. One of the things that I really do like about this formula is that as it wears off throughout the day, you're kind of left with that little bit of a stain look, but if you want to apply another coat, you can, and it doesn't look cakey. It doesn't start to really settle into fine lines and accentuate those fine lines on your lips. Um, I think that it really does a, a pretty good job of sort of gliding over those lines and not making them um, really stand out like some of the drier formulas do. The last product that was in the um, Ipsy bag was this um, Adesse, I'm guessing that's how you say it, New York Organic Infused Nail Lacquer. Beautiful, beautiful color. This is Surfer Girl. And um, I will say that while I love the color of this and I love the fact that it is organic, this is the type of nail polish that it tends to be a no-no for me. And that's because it's a very thick polish and I am a polish peeler, and those really thick polishes um, just are too tempting <laughs> for me. Um, it did take three coats to be completely opaque. I was using rather thin coats because this is such a thick formula, so that may be why it really took um, three coats, and so, and it's just kind of your standard regular nail polish applicator that you have there. So this is an absolutely beautiful color for summer. It does have, um, even though it's organic, it does have sort of a very strong nail polish scent to it, um, but that doesn't linger after you close the bottle. It's really kind of while you have the bottle near you. Um, I don't have it on my nails right now, but I did take a picture and post it on my Instagram, so I will insert that here. So overall, I was really pleased with the boxes this month. There was really only um, two products that I wasn't thrilled with. The Temp2, um, I could really do without. Like I said, I had had two samples of that before and I decluttered it. And um, the Brow Gal brush, I'm not really a big fan of because it's not the style that I like, um, but it is a, a nice brush. It does have a really nice spoolie on the end and so, 
Um, if you like those brushes to be a little bit more pliable while you're doing your brows, then you would probably really enjoy that brush. I just tend to like a stiffer brush to do my brows. Um, so this is the completed look that I got from the May BoxyCharm and Ipsy. BoxyCharm is $21 a month. Ipsy is $10 a month. And I think I told you how much everything was that I knew the price of the products. Did I? Um, and I don't know what my card is. So, but yeah, I completely lost my, oh, there it is, right over there on the floor. So for the boxy charm stuff, the highlight and contour palette was $40. The contour brush, which I am absolutely in love with, was $24.99. That brow brush was $14. The um, actual brow powder slash pomade was $35, and that Temp2 Liquid Glow was $29.50. Ipsy doesn't give you prices. I think that the liquid lipsticks was probably a full size, and the nail polish was probably a full size. Everything else was sample value, which is kind of what you expect from Ipsy. So if you like this style of video, this more kind of get ready with me, see how the products actually work um, and how they work together with a whole look. I don't know if I could do it every month. It kind of depends on what types of products that they send. Um, but if you like this type of video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up or leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here if you haven't already. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for being a part of this community. And don't forget to hit that little bell to get alerts when I post new videos. That's a lot of housekeeping stuff there at the end, isn't it? Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.